You don't have to be around long to realize that life moves pretty fast. If you look back for even just a year, what would you see? What if you looked back five years? For a long time, when I looked back, all I felt was shame. I felt like my present problems determined my path for the future. But then a breakthrough came. I realized that my future goals didn't have to be determined by who I was or what my limitations were. I learned to ask myself the question, what if? My name is Chris Brantley, and this is my story. At the age of 13, I had gotten to 250 pounds. I was addicted to junk food, video games, and soda. I was super insecure, and I had absolutely no self-confidence. Growing up, I was, I was bullied, I was called fat. People made fun of me for being ugly. All the types of things that you hear, as you know, a 13-year-old who's bigger than everyone else around you. It got me to a place where almost I was depressed. I, I felt alone, and it, it wasn't a good place that I was in. I got to about the age of 15 where I decided that something was gonna have to change. I knew that if I kept on the trajectory that I was going, I was gonna end up destroying my health and having some serious problems as I got older. So I committed that I was going to exercise, that I was going to eat right, that I was going to make this big change in my life. And I started off by being on this super restricted diet. All I was eating was basically no carbs. I could only eat vegetables, proteins, but only certain lean proteins and fruit. And I was probably eating like 1,500 to maybe 1,700 calories a day. And then I started this workout program that's called Insanity and it's this like max high intensity interval training type of workout. In a couple months I had already lost like 30 pounds probably and people around me had already started noticing and because people were noticing it was very motivating to me because um, people finally started to you know give me compliments instead of bullying me and calling me fat and all those types of things. And that only motivated me more to keep going and to keep losing weight and to keep pushing. So then I also started a program, which I'm sure many people have heard of, which is called P90X. And it's kind of intervals, but it also adds weight training into the mix as well. And I probably lost another 15 to 20 pounds by the time I went to college. And I was feeling really, really good. And then in college, I kind of was up and down in my, my fitness journey. I kind of yo-yoed a lot. I would go through a few months exercising, eating well, and then I'd not exercise and eat like crap. Probably got back up to maybe like 190-ish, maybe up to 200 when I was my heaviest. And I was feeling pretty bad about myself again, pretty insecure. I did end up getting a job when I graduated. I worked for about nine months, um, and then the pandemic hit, and of course, life changed dr drastically kind of overnight for the first couple days i kind of sat around didn't do anything ate like crap and then i was just kind of thinking about it i was like you know what i have all this time why don't i use it for something that's actually going to benefit me so i committed to just starting to exercise again kind of get back into the routine um, so i did that i started just running a little bit every morning and started eating well and that kind of found my love again for running. Got my runners high a couple times and that just motivated me more and more to keep going. Started seeing results. And then I kind of wanted to do something that I could like commit to, to challenge myself physically. So I thought to myself, you know what? I think it may be a good idea to try to run a Boston paced half marathon. So a sub hour and a half marathon. And I was only at that time probably running like maybe a max of like five miles. And I wanted to challenge myself to see what I was really made of, what I could push my body to do. So I committed to do it and I, I knew in my mind that if I went all in on this and I had nothing else to do anyway, so why not put it to good use, go all in, work hard at it. I think I could accomplish this goal of running an hour and a half half marathon. I ran the half marathon and I ran it in an hour and 29 minutes. I felt a lot of accomplishment for doing that. It was a big relief because even during the race, 
I was like, I don't know, what if I can't do it? I'm not sure if I'm gonna make it, but after about 10 miles, I just held that 6.45 minute per mile pace, which is what you have to hold to run a, one, a sub 130 half marathon. 10 miles in, I knew that if I could just keep pushing for another three miles, I could, I could complete this in an hour, less than an hour and a half. And crossing the finish line was an incredible feeling. And after that, I kind of was thinking to myself, that was a big accomplishment. That felt really good, but I felt like it wasn't as hard as something I could do. Like what, what, can, what can push me a little bit more? I followed Nick Bear and a lot of people who were into triathlons and things like that. And I was like, you know what? What's a good idea? Maybe I should, maybe I should do a half Ironman. You know what? That sounds like a good idea. Little did I know how much work that would have to go into that to be able to accomplish it. The 70.3 Ironman is a race that can test even the most elite of athletes. The distance is spread out through a 1.2 mile swim, directly transitioning into a 56 mile bike ride, directly transitioning into a half marathon, which is 13.1 miles. For the average amateur, the race can be around six to nine hours, depending on many different variables. The race is not only gonna test you physically, but even more so mentally. To be able to run a race like this, you have to be consistent not only with your training, but also your nutrition. I tried to keep proteins and fats moderate and carbohydrates high. I used mainly high quality carb sources like oatmeal, quinoa, and fruit to fuel me for my training. I also used Gatorade to fuel me for some of the longer training sessions like on the bike. All right, so we are going to go through what's gonna be going in my gear bag for transitions. Now to figure out the best place to put this on my helmet. I do not know the best place that it should go, but we'll wing it just like anything. So the first thing that's gonna go in the gear bag is the helmet. And then I have my cycling shoes. I have my sunglasses. I have my Nike Vapor Flies that will be used for the transition from the bike to the run. Those will give me about like two miles per hour extra speed. They're pretty much cheating. For the run as well, I'm gonna have a nice lightweight hat that I'll put on to kind of help give me some shade in the sun. For the most part, I'm just gonna be using Gatorade. I'm gonna have two water bottles filled um, with water and then probably two to three scoops of Gatorade. For the run, I'm not gonna be having as much Gatorade. I'm gonna be having a ton of these goos they're, called, they're just energy gels. Also, this is a nice kind of feminine uh, Adidas bag, but it is my lovely fiance's. I can call her that now, she's not a girlfriend anymore. Um, and this will be kind of going under my bike a little bit once I get from the transition from the swim into the bike. This is gonna be under it. Hopefully it's legal. We're gonna find out in the morning, I guess. It is race morning. It is like 5.15 a.m. I've been up since about four. 4 a.m., yeah. How I'm feeling? I am feeling good right now. I'm actually not too nervous. Pretty good. I'm sure once I hit that water, all the butterflies will be flying and it's gonna be cold, so. Um, but other than that, I guess I'll see you guys there. I'm feeling, I'm getting nervous. We're about an hour out. So uh, there's a ton of athletes out there. It looks like I'll kind of be able to go whenever I want. It's not gonna be based on age group. How you feeling? How you feeling? I feel good. I feel excited. We're probably still like 20 minutes away from even getting in the water. So hopefully we'll be fast. It warms up a little bit for you. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to warm up. It's pretty chilly. It's pretty chilly. Come race day, obviously there's a lot of butterflies. There's a lot of nerves starting. And as I jumped in the water, I had swam a lot in pools and I had swam in open water a little bit, but I don't know. Once I got in, it felt if I felt almost very alone, like you're in a big, huge body of water with all these people around you, but at the same time, you're the only one that's gonna get you across to the end so that you can get on the bike. And I don't know what it was, but I almost had kind of like a panic situation. But I knew that I'd heard from people that had done triathlons before, what they said, no matter what, just keep going. No matter how slow it is, just don't stop because that can cause other problems if you stop. It felt like I was going really slow. I would try to do some freestyle and then do some breaststroke here and there and I finally made my way down the river. And actually when I got in there, I looked in my, at my watch and I had actually done it in a pretty decent time. I did it in like 30 minutes. So I completed that, got on the bike and I was on my way. I felt good and for about the first 20 miles. I felt strong and then probably for the next 20 miles, I was starting to hurt a little bit and I knew that's when things were gonna be a little more challenging. Um, and then I got to about mile 40 
and that's when my legs were just screaming at me. I was in probably some of the worst physical pain from exercise that I had ever been in before. And I literally had tears that were just like streaming down my face just from the pain. And around that time is when I had some of my friends, they were waiting for me um, on an SUV for me to, to cross and they were gonna follow me for a little bit. So around mile 40 or 45 is that's when I found them. And that's when I was hurting really, really bad. And they kind of helped me get through those next 16, 10 to 16 miles on the bike to finish out that portion of the race finally got back in on the bike, transitioned, put my running shoes on, and my legs felt a little bit better at that point. I started the run off pretty well, going at about an eight minute per mile pace. And then my kind of my strategy after a couple miles in, I decided that I would run a mile and then I'd stop there, you know, throw some ice down my back, have a goo or something like that, just to take a little bit of a rest. Then I'd run another mile and I just keep continuing to do that. That kind of got me through the race. I also saw a friend of mine that I had talked to when I was getting into the water, so I ran with him for a little while, which kind of helped me get through um, a little bit of it mentally, just to talk to someone, it's always nice to run with. Finally got to the end, crossed the finish line, and I don't know, all throughout the race, there was these moments that I was thinking, I don't know, what, what if I can't complete this race? What, if, what am I gonna do? But at the same time, this other thought, I was like, you know, what if, what if I can do it? What if I can cross this finish line, prove to the people that are around me, prove to myself that I can accomplish this huge goal from, you know, even in the back of my mind, just from my story, my transformation, going from a kid being 250 pounds to being someone who can complete a 70.3 mile race in agony and pain through the bike and just through the, honestly, the whole race in general was um, in the back of my mind and that kind of, I felt like kept me going to hopefully accomplish this goal that I had been thinking about for, for six, seven months. There's a quote by President Roosevelt that's meant a lot to me over my Iron Man journey, and it goes like this. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood who strives valiantly, who at the worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither knew victory nor defeat. I think the takeaway that I want people to get from this documentary is that no matter where you're at, no matter where you start, you can change, whether that's you want to lose weight, whether that's you want to get back into the gym after being gone for a long time, or maybe it's not even fitness related, maybe it's spiritually, maybe you want to get back into church, get back to reading your Bible, maybe it's business related and you want to talk to your boss about getting a raise or, you know, quit the job and get the job that you actually want. Whatever the case may be, I hope that this documentary inspires people that no matter where you start or where you're at, you can always take one step. You can always go to the next phase and challenge yourself in some way. It doesn't have to be big because for me, it wasn't this huge, I went from 250 pounds to doing a half Ironman overnight. It was what, like a five or six year commitment that I had to make and I hope to continue that, continue to challenge myself, continue to go one more and to find the next thing. It was so much harder than I expected it to be. Honestly, it's incredibly humbling. And this was probably definitely one of the hardest, hardest physical thing I have ever, ever done. So right now, all I want to do and all I can think about is laying down, maybe drinking a lot of water and sleeping for about 17 days. So yeah, overall thoughts, I mean, it's an incredible experience. Will I ever do a full Ironman? After that, I don't know, maybe. I'll have to sleep on it and see what happens. You don't have to be around long to realize that life moves pretty fast. So don't look back anymore. Don't be stuck waiting. If you were to look ahead for a year or even five years, what would you hope to see? Maybe right now, you found yourself broken and bruised, wondering to yourself, what if I don't make it? But what if, at the end of all this, you cross the finish line stronger than you've ever been before? What if you make it to the other side?